Hi, I'm Alison Spurl, co-owner of Les Amis de Fromage in Vancouver. And I was going to talk to you this afternoon about the classic pairing of Roquefort and Sauterne. Um, because the Roquefort is so strong, I think I'll start out by talking to you about the Sauterne and we can try the, the wine first. I always suggest to people that they try wine before they try cheese, um, as cheese is pretty strong flavors and, and once you've tried them, you might not be able to go backwards. So both of these items today, the Sauterne and the Roquefort, are AOP designated. Uh, that's Appellation d'Origent Protégé. Excuse my terrible French, so sorry. And what that basically means is that they are from a designated place of origin. So it's a protected name. Uh, you can't make Sauterne in BC or in South America um, or anywhere else in Europe. It has to be from the area of Sauterne, which is a small area within the wine growing region of Bordeaux. So, um, so turn, <laughs> sorry. Today what we're having is a 2003 Riesec. Riesec is really famous for long aged wines. So well, you would be able to keep this much longer than this, but still it's delicious. It's not as if the age has um, not uh, improved it at all. It's beautiful and uh, I already tasted it and it's lovely. The smell is very mm, rich and kind of honeyed and like apricots. Um, the wine is made with grapes that have been uh, excuse me, what's that word I'm looking for? Oh, <laughs> affected, affected by Botrytis. Botrytis is a, a fungus that attacks the uh, grapes and basically they shrivel. They lose water content and are left with all the sugars. So by the time they go to press the grapes to make the wine, the sugar content is very high. That's why you get these very beautiful lush dessert wines. And these are particularly lovely. So one of the great pairings, and it's kind of considered a classic French pairing of wine and cheese, is Sauterne and Roquefort. Roquefort is a very specific blue cheese. I think sometimes blue cheeses are a little confusing for people. Um, they sort of think blue is just a, a cheese. There's one cheese called blue cheese. And there are lots of blue cheeses in the store. We have anywhere from 40 to 50 kinds of blue cheese. But Roquefort is a very specific and very traditional cheese. It's made in the area of Aveyron, which is um, South France, um, if you're thinking of wine areas sort of near Languedoc, that kind of area. So it's made of um, sheep's milk or ewe's milk, and so it can never be made of cow's milk. So that's part of the appellation, that's part of the AOP designation, is it has to be made in this area, it has to be made of sheep's milk, it's made with the kind of um, mold and inoculant that would uh, make the cheese blue, that it is uh, occurring naturally in the caves in this area. And that's where the cheese is aged for part of its uh, uh, maturation. And so it's um, infected with the uh, Roquefort bacteria. And part of the whole process is a brining process. So the cheese A is affected with, with the mold. It's made from sheep's milk. It's brined. You're talking about a lot of very intense flavors. So what happens is the cheese, the, the milk is made into curd. The curd is affected with the bacteria, inoculated with the bacteria. Then the cheese is brined for a number of weeks and then left to age in natural caves in the area. And once it's going into the caves to age, it will be pierced with uh, metal rods. Not that the metal rods add the blue, but they allow oxygen into the cheese. And then the um, penicillin will start to get blue, the mold will grow, and what happens, I don't know if you can really see on my board here so well, but I'll hold it up if you can, but you almost get little kind of caverns of blue cheese. And as the blue, like you can see in this piece, it's, it's quite blue in this piece, uh, less one it's quite blue and you almost see a little kind of caverns and basically it's the blue growing and growing and it presses against the paste of the cheese and then whey will come out of the cheese so sometimes people are like oh you know the wrapper on my blue cheese is a little bit kind of drippy um, that's pretty common 
And the reason is just the cheese is always growing. Just because we've cut this piece doesn't mean it stopped changing. It's still changing. Things are still happening to it in your fridge. They may not be better things for it because normally once you've cut a cheese, it's not really improving, but it's still changing no matter what. Um, it's a living thing, so it's still, it's still happening. So kind of one of the cool things about Sauternes and Roquefort is Roquefort is, as I said, quite salty, a little pretty, pretty strong. Um, and because of the Sauternes being so kind of rich and lush and quite sweet, there's some nice synergy that happens there with the sweetness of the wine, the salty kind of strength of the cheese. And it's also very quite sort of buttery um, texture on your palate. Uh, you can see, sorry, I haven't cut any, um, that it's very soft. We've had this piece out of the fridge for a little bit, but even if we hadn't, you can see it's quite soft and it will be quite spreadable. So it's a really nice kind of combination with that richness and then the nice little um, sweetness of the wine just really mixes together and makes this beautiful combination. Quite often when you would have this would be after dinner. Um, you probably wouldn't be having dessert wine and, and Roquefort before dinner. That would be pretty powerful for your taste buds. Uh, so after dinner, it would be so nice. Just it's, it's like a nice course that you have a very leisurely time. You just have a little bit. You might have one other cheese. And I weirdly on this plate was going to talk a little bit about pairing uh, with Roquefort. And quite often Roquefort and other cheeses in France, for that matter, are served with butter which horrifies um, <laughs> North Americans because they're worried about their cholesterol. But butter really is an amazing um, addition sometimes to blue cheeses. And I find especially Roquefort, and it's not really that it's um, making it less strong. There's just something about the combination. It really makes it very delicious. So just saying, you should try it. Don't knock it before you try it. Uh, toasted nuts are another really uh, awesome combination. Maybe this happens to be pistachios because that's what I have in my cupboard, but um, toasted walnuts or toasted um, mm, even pecans, hazelnuts, a warm out of the oven after dinner with the, with the cheese would be really great. Another thing that's really um, nice to do with Roquefort, I mean, lots of people serve it in a salad and because of the strength of the cheese, it can really stand up to lots of bold flavors. So like radicchio and endive, toasted nuts in your salad, a dressing that's quite um, tangy, it, it can stand up. It's creaminess and it's richness and it's saltiness, which you have to kind of consider when you make your dressing, um, will all stand up really well. And Another fun thing is uh, a compound butter made with Roquefort. So if you add sort of, I would guess, half um, Roquefort and half butter when it's room temperature and make a little compound butter to have on steak right off the barbecue, that's pretty, pretty tasty combination. This Roquefort today is a maker called Gabrielle Coulet. There are only about four or five makers of uh, Roquefort uh, in the area. And Société, which probably lots of people know, has a green foil on the outside, has a little B on the, on the label, makes about 90% of the Roquefort in France. So you can imagine that's a pretty large company. And then the other ones are quite a bit smaller by comparison. Another famous one is Papillon Noir. Uh, this is Gabriel Coulet. There's also Carl, which is, I think, the last family-owned uh, Roquefort maker. So it's quite a small industry and yet a very much loved cheese. Uh, we sell really a lot of it in the store. So hopefully you've learned a little something and hopefully you have a chance to try some dessert wine if you don't have uh, Sauternes, which you certainly might not. And any other kind of dessert wine might work well. Nothing too heavy. Um, a German Baroness Lisa, uh, BC late harvest or ice wine, a Barsac, which is another kind of um, dessert wine from Bordeaux. All of those things would work great with the Roquefort. Thanks for joining us. I'm Allison at Lazy Me de Fromage. Have a fun Sunday.